All right, everybody, it's Overreaction Monday. It is November. It is getting late early. Oh, yeah, it is. It is time to overreact to everything. Chris Brockman, Rich hey. Eisen, here with you, fresh back from Munich, Germany. That's why we're coming out with Overreaction Monday on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. <laughs> That's why I landed last <laughs> night. My right eye can't stop twitching, so I'm oh, overreacting okay, to no then. sleep. It's all good. <laughs> I might be in a mood. I don't know. Yes. That's the type of setup oh, we have. This is great. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. That was terrible. That was crap. That was garbage. This place sucks. Overreaction. Mondays. Monday. And as always, we are brought to you by Game Time, the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Last minute deals. Killer. Last minute deals, all in prices. View from your seats. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Get our code overreaction into your device and get $20 off your first purchase. Christopher, what do you have Rich, over there? What's up, man? I am okay. Hey, great job on the cast. And it'd be a really fun game. Overtime. Oh, you got overtime. That's yeah. Great. I forgot how to say it in German. I asked it during the commercial. You didn't ask break. Sean huh? You didn't ask Sean Hockley how I, to pronounce it in German. I think he, I saw him talking into a device. Uh huh. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. I, I don't know if people are clowning him or anything. I thought that was a kind of a cool moment. I saw him talking into a handheld device, and I'm wondering if that was like a translator or something. Oh, interesting. Because... Yeah, how, yeah. I mean, did, or did, did, did he practice every penalty? I, exactly right. You know I, I, mean? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> did he practice false start, and you just busted that one out? Yeah. But, you know, his dad apparently did a call did in Spanish uh -huh. when he was officiating a uh, a, uh, yeah. a game in Mexico City. But That's cool. That at any cool. rate, thank you for that. Yeah, what of do course, you have? Man. What's first All up? All right, Rich, I want to start with, I thought, with the game of the week on Sunday, Steelers Commanders. Yes. Oh, baby, they look great. Steelers are going to be playing in the AFC Championship game. I don't think that's an overreaction right now. I don't think it. it's one. Joe Thomas, when we were sitting in Munich on our beautiful set out there, was talking about... Who are the teams he, he that could knock off sleeper. the Chiefs? Yeah. And he mentioned he mentioned the Steelers. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, dude, uh, you got to give it up to Russ right now. I, I don't think man. it's an overreaction to say that he is playing his best football since his second to last year in Seattle right, right now. Right. I since, think well, like 20, he is playing his best football in years, yeah. in absolute years, five years maybe. Yeah. And what he's doing is neck up, getting everybody in the right play. He is not breaking breaking down after his first read is covered and starts running for his life. He's mm -hmm. not doing anything like that. And his his teardrop passes like the the, the deep ball, done. the deep ball that he was known for in Seattle, where he throws it in the air so damn high. And then it just drops down perfectly. Yeah. And Mike Williams, who probably has only caught about, what? would you say, two dozen footballs from the guy? Maybe. 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 I, I, I don't know. Can't imagine he practiced much last week. And no. then he gets out there. And, and then he catches the game-winning <laughs> score. An, an unbelievable kind of over-the-shoulder. Beautiful. It was, it was awesome. An absolute drop it in the bucket. Yeah. And the run game is as good as it's been. Wow, and then George Pickens, like once a week, it seems like he highlight. makes a highlight, spectacular catch of the year and type type move. As we all know, uh, Russ is used to throwing to a number 14 who's a physical beast. <laughs> and and so it, it's very similar right mm -hmm. now to to the, the Russ of of the the Seattle cooking, which is run game supports, passing game is complimentary, the deep chunk plays are significant, are yeah. and you have to give it up to the Pittsburgh Steelers for and Tomlin for making the move when his quarterback is four and two and saying Russ was the guy all along, and we 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 trust our instincts here, and he's three and oh. And and this one, you could say, all right. Sunday night against the Jets, a Monday night against the the Giants, mm -hmm. both at home. Right. And this one was in Washington, D.C. Maybe the biggest commander's game in, what, a decade maybe at least? And it was one of those slobber knockers and Donnie Brooks, so however you want to put it. And yep. the Steelers came up with the dub. And at this point in time, you know, obviously one week from now, this may turn out to be a complete overreaction if the Steelers – take care of business against this. Uh, if the Ravens take care of business against the Steelers, yeah. then suddenly the Steelers are now right. a wild card team yeah. and would have to go on the road 
and would have to go to maybe Houston. Mm -hmm. Whoever loses the AFC North will have to visit I I would think Well they'll the be the five AF seed, right? Right. They'd right. have to visit the the Texans. Whoever wins the AFC South, right? Because the Bills and the Chiefs are going to be one, two, and then whoever wins the AFC North will, be will most likely three. either be two or three. Right, right, right. So whoever loses the AFC North will be the five seed heading to to Houston. Yep, that's kind of what happened last year. And so that's where what happened. Flacco, well, went, into Flacco went into Houston. Yeah, and got beat. Correct. Yeah. So, um, I don't think it's an overreaction to say this. It's not a certainty. No. But you can't sit here and go get get out of here. I still need to see some more. You're seeing enough more defensively. Do we have to see now. You're I seeing mean. enough defensively, and you're seeing enough from Russ that this doesn't appear to be a mirage. And barring injury, they're they're going to be a one tough out, man. But Certainly more a tougher out than the Steelers have proven in previous playoff seasons for them. I think it's unbelievable what they've done this year. That's thought, why Tomlin was your midseason coach was, of the year it was, last week. It, to get the team to this point, like we talked about in the preseason with the backloading of the, the the division schedule, and then to make the move to say, look, I know we're playing well. I know we're four and two, but Russ is it. And now he's being rewarded for it. Hey, listen, we're all assuming the Chiefs are going to be one of those teams in the AFC Championship game, and the Bills are looking terrific, and who, you know, yeah. the Ravens are going to raise their hands. We'll see if the Texans can start protecting any better. Can the Chargers actually shock anybody? In the playoffs, I mean, these are these are the questions surrounding who would finish in the final two in the AFC. Mm -hmm. And to sit here and say the Steelers are going to be one of them, I can't push back on that and yeah. say you're out of your mind. I'm with it. What else? Rich, this was your sleeper team before the year in the NFC. Arizona. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Cardinals are going to win a home playoff game in two months. Hmm. They, they they do look pretty damn good, man. Kyle Murray's balling. Uh, I, I I get it. So they're most like, you know, I mean, they could finish as the three seed, possibly, if Atlanta keeps stubbing its toe in places that you don't expect. I didn't want to say they're just going to win the West, because I think they're going to win the West. I think they're going to win a playoff game and get to division. Well, round. here's the deal. Um, with Arizona's final remaining schedule, they're on a bye this week, while San Francisco and Seattle beat each other up. The Rams losing last night was a or Monday night was a particularly tough blow yeah. for the Rams, but they can they can overcome that. Yeah, they have, um, they and the Rams are in New England up. this coming week, and yeah, I, 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 mean, I think at this point in time we we might have to stop saying New England is somebody's homecoming. So you look at Arizona's schedule, and they have both games against Seattle remaining, and then their remaining games against the Rams and the Niners, who they've already beaten, with uh, a home date from New England a visit to Minnesota and a visit to Carolina, which by the way, may not be after having, I, I tested them that, that may not be the homecoming either that you're expecting. That's a tougher game. It's not an automatic, no, win. but, but they, they do have the, the path to the NFC West. Yeah, I think so. You know, the question is, is would they beat whoever finishes second in the NFC East or North? That's a tall order, pal. If Home Washington's game? coming in, I mean Philly or Washington going west on a ro you know road yeah, game. Be a lot of the, there'd be a lot of people of, yeah, wearing right, those colors right. in there. So uh, know, at this point, to say that they're gonna there. they're just gonna be a, the fi a final four team in the NFC right now, I think is more of an overreaction than the Steelers making the AFC Championship game. If I need to balance things out right now, you got more confidence right now in Cardinals or Falcons. <laughs> I mean, obviously the Cardinals are on a winning streak, so I'll go Arizona. Yeah, I mean, same record. They're both six and four, uh, both leading their division. I, I, I'm going to go. This is overreaction ish. Okay, ish. Okay. okay, not full. All right, ish. All right. What else? Let's see if I can make you go full with this one. The Jets would have had a better record this year with Zach Wilson. No, nah, that's. Statistically, I don't even they're know why exactly you're bringing this stuff same. up. Why are you even bringing this stuff up? Because What's Rogers, the point? Rogers shouldn't have played this year. He should have retired. That's why. He looks terrible. He doesn't look like he wants to be out there. He definitely doesn't want to be hit. And he just doesn't have it. He's taken over this organization, and they've gone to complete garbage. So... I, Zach I, Wilson, at least, he was dude, a guy Zach who, Wilson you was, homegrown, uh, and he played well last year in some games. He almost beat the Chiefs. Dude, he did beat the Eagles. An absolute 
The, the Un- statistically points, yards, everything is the same as Real- last year at this point. An absolutely unrealistic idea that Zach Wilson was going to come back for the Jets this year, and then they would start him. Uh, I, honestly, there, even if Rodgers took your advice and said, I'm done, I'm sorry, New York. I didn't expect to blow out my Achilles just before I'm turning 40. I do just want to go drink my tea and stare at the Egyptian wow. pyramids and go and and that sounds great and, and join a political world and well, do that, that sort of but. stuff. I, I mean, and he just like I'm, you know, you know what? Life has taken a turn. Even if they had done all of that, they would not have kept Zach Wilson. That is just an untenable. It just doesn't even make sense. This is just not even a realistic. If you did concept. A, but if you did a blind taste test of the, all the stats from this year and all the stats from last year, they're exactly the same. And you don't know which one was Aaron Rodgers and which one was Zach Wilson. Everyone fell in love with the name Aaron Rodgers without looking the type of player he was in the last few years. On occasion, you see the throws that you need to see. On occasion, you need to see the runs that you need to see. On occasion, you see the catches that you need to see. On occasion, you see the pressure defensively you need to see. And on occasion, you see the plays in the secondary you need to see. But the problem is those occasions have been fewer and further between. And part of the reason may be, why are you firing your coach after five games? What that was, that was point really dumb. does that actually prove? That may be what one of the dumbest moves of the whole season. are you actually trying to achieve in the uh-huh. middle of all of this you're handing the team off to somebody who's never done it before. And if, you know, I don't know this man. I've heard nothing but great things about Jeff Ulbrich. I've heard nothing but great things about what other teams think of him. He was doing a great job running I that defense. I understand why the Niners were knocking on the door to say maybe we can take him. I understand all of that. But nothing rings more hollow than an interim head coach who is completely ineffectual after a loss like the one they just suffered in Arizona saying, I'll take responsibility for it. (laughs) Like, okay. (laughs) And I understand he's trying to set a standard in the few weeks Uh, he has there in his own locker room, but to the fans outside, it's just like that. And you know, an old Metro card will get me on the fortress. Yeah. Like big gulps, huh? What does it mean? Yeah. So that's why I'm asking, like, why are you even asking saying such a thing like this? Who knows? You, Zach Wilson was an untenable choice. Unfortunately, for the Jets, nothing is working. I don't know why nothing is working. Something should be working. Something's missing. And in a quarterback-driven league, sure, pin it on the quarterback, but also pin it on the owner, pin it on the general manager, pin it on all these players that had a somewhat, you know, healthy Aaron Rodgers coming back and it's falling completely apart. And I just find it wild that you want to keep talking about a team that you think we should move on from. I'm just saying like, okay, the Jets had Super Bowl aspirations. This is not even an and overreaction. They, and they have the same record as a team that's literally trying to lose every game. This is that's not all. even an overreaction. This is just a, page. this is, this is just uh, 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 not even in the realm of reality. It's the last time we'll ever talk about the Jets on this. Podcast I have a feeling that's not true. That's an overreaction. <laughs> right there. Speaking of teams I don't want to talk about anymore, Rich, the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> okay. If Jerry Jones calls this offseason, Bill Belichick should hang up. Mm. <laughs> new phone, who dis? New phone, who dis? Hey, excuse me. No, 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 no. New phone, who dis? <laughs> I don't know. Um, who else is, who else is, who else is uh, Bill getting a call from? Uh, Shad Khan's going to call him. Okay. Both I, both states don't have state state income tax. So what else? I think that the McCaskies are going to call him. I don't know about that. I don't think the McCaskies are calling Bill Belichick. Well, they need to. Clean, I think if the McCaskies are calling house. anybody, they are calling Ben Johnson of Detroit. Okay, great. Saying, I don't know. Maybe, what, maybe what, Ben doesn't want to go there, but I'm just saying. Why? Why wouldn't he want to go there? He should. But you know what I mean. If you if you look at um, Woody what Johnson can call, do, but he's not well, going. But, but Bill's now, not going Bill, Bill Bill to answer that call Bill either. Won't even saying. hang up. Bill Bill might just like you know answer and and play along, <laughs> just to make him think <laughs> like, like when it's you're entirely possible. When you're messing with telemarketers. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Bill might just like play it, play along, and string <laughs> oh, it out. Uh-huh. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh really? And how much would you offer me? 
<laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I can have a Hamptons house. What oh, else can okay. I get? Yeah, interesting. You know, and, and just keep asking for things, <laughs> make Woody give them. And then, and then say no. And then say no. But weeks later, like make him make him spend <laughs> the time. Let me sleep on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's Ma- see. I, I, Who else I, is I don't Bill? think he would hang up from from um, from Jerry Jones. the 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 thing though that Bill would do, what Bill would bring, uh, is is the ability for Jerry to just tell the fan base we're getting the best of the best Mm -hmm. and um, everything else organizationally that you think that I've put too much of my two cents into that has curdled the, uh, the porridge (laughs) um, that, um, that bill is now going to be in charge of. And you You know, Jerry's going to hand over roster and draft no but uh this the same it worked for parcells man i remember again when parcells took over that gig there nfl network was just being born yeah. and everybody thought there's no way that's going to work there's no way that parcells mr i need to shop for the groceries was right. going to come in and let jerry be the the general manager and arbiter of everything i can't sit here and say if it was if it if it worked for parcells then obviously it would work for belichick I don't think he should hang up. I think that's an overreaction. I totally understand why you're saying that, that it's so bad in Dallas it's right so now. It's so bad. We're talking about the sun. I know. Well, and shades we've been and talking about that. We've and... been talking about that for a long time. It's just the fact that everything is going so poorly for the Cowboys right now. And CBA we're, had a and touchdown. We, and we have run out. We have, dude, we have run out <laughs> of things up to talk about with the Dallas Cowboys about yeah. how poorly things are going to the point where now we're drilling down to the design flaws of the stadium <laughs> and, w- and where it's situated in relation right. to the but sunset. It's always been that way. And yeah. it, it happens every Thanksgiving because the Cowboys always play in that window where at some point the sun is, yeah. is an issue after we fall back on the time. You know, and, uh, uh, yeah. But, but the bottom line is uh, Belichick should absolutely answer the phone for the very fact that you want to run up the price everywhere else. That's like true. this is this is like uh the Yankees to someone else's Red Sox. You want the Red Sox or the Yankees in on every single argument or the Dodgers now. The you Blue know Jays I mean? are getting the first meeting with Soto. You yeah. see that? I did see that and and I I wish to not discuss it. <laughs> We're at halftime right now of Overreaction Monday, right heading towards the middle of November. And right around the corner are big-time college football games, big-time professional football games. College basketball is starting. Also, we know that the professional basketball world, hockey, so much is happening right now, and it can be overwhelming to find the tickets to any event that you're looking for in your area. That's why there's a new feature called Game Time Picks. It helps you curate out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats. You're not wasting time searching through thousands of tickets. The all-in pricing feature seat allows you to see your total up front. There's no surprise fees at checkout. The ability to see the view from your seat also takes out a little bit more guesswork. So take out all the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time Picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use our code OVERREACTION. You get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Visit GameTime.co for details. Again, create an account. Redeem our code OVERREACTION. $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game time. Christopher, what's up? Rich, you just saw this team in London. Not in London, in Munich. I did. Overtime. The Panthers are going to finish second in the NFC South. Oh. The only reason why I would push back on this is because no, 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 hold on a minute. I appreciate you saying that, and I appreciate the Saints. They look really good. I, 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 they, they, they look good. Bryce I mean, Young, Bryce, Bryce, Young's, Young's Bryce Young is playing so much. Better. Is absolutely taking steps. He is one hundred percent improving week to week. He also, you know, it's interesting. Dave Canales said to us in our pre-broadcast meeting, the head coach, and I'm perfect photograph to put up there. Hoskins, our uh, CP, and uh, Monaco popping out up there. This smile and first down point. I pointed this out during our broadcast. Dave Canales, who's a uh, Pete Carroll acolyte, right? met him all the way when out here in Southern California. He was at El Camino College, and Pete was at USC. Mm-hmm. And Pete took him to, uh, to, um, to Seattle. And as a matter of fact, he was in Munich for that Seattle game against Tampa two years ago on, uh, as, a, as an assistant. 
But he said that when you keep winning and he knows things are going to be turning a corner when the personalities of the team begin to show up mm. on the field. I like that. And Xavier Leggett, um, which is, he told us that's it's not Leggett, it's Leggett. Oh, Leggett. Uh, him riding Dollar Bill, his <laughs> one of his 15 horses, by the way, and it's about to be 16 because he said he was going to go on this bye week to go the, visit go Devin visit. White's right. horse guy to wow. get a 16th horse. Um, at any rate, but that moment when Bryce Young smiled and gave the mm-hmm. first, first down, down point, it was one of those personality moments showing up. I'm like, how many times has Bryce Young felt comfortable enough to do it? Or first of all, come up with a big first down. <laughs> right, right, set, and right. then, then feel comfortable about stunting, if Pro- you will. Probably been since his Alabama it, it, days. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yes, but dude, Tampa's really good. Don't sleep on Tampa. Struggling, man. I, well, I mean. Struggle it bus. It, it's not a struggle bus so much, but, you know, Tampa had the unfortunate circumstance of of playing Kansas City and San Francisco in back-to-back weeks. And, I, I and, and, and so, so listen, man, and Tampa, once upon a time, you know, with Bal- by the way, Baltimore, Atlanta, Kansas City, San Francisco – off the bye, they're at the Giants, at Carolina, home for Vegas. They're out here to the Chargers. You would think they'd win. They're at Dallas, home for Carolina, home for New Orleans. They can look at this and say, Evans is coming back. They can go on a run here. Correct. Yeah. So, as much as I, I'd like to, <sighs> right. to see a, a, a half full glass for Carolina winning back-to-back games for the first time in two years and feeling good about themselves, and they have every reason to do so. Finishing yeah, second. Hubbard, man. What a monster. I, I know. And then what a great way for him to have a career day after signing a four-year, $33 yeah, million that dollar so deal. Cool. That kid, Jonathan Brooks, is coming, back. coming back. There yeah. are reasons to be, you know, encouraged, happier yeah, encouraged. as a Panther fan. But a second-place finish, that, that's an overreaction. All right. What else? All right, All right let's go to the other team you saw uh, in Munich. It's bad. Daniel Jones has started his last game as Giants quarterback. That may happen. That may happen. It's over. I think that's an overreaction that they're gonna that that he's never gonna start again for the Giants the rest of this year. Um, he just doesn't see the field very well, Chris. I don't know what it is. I, I'm not gonna make a neck joke. I'm not. I promise, dude. I don't know what it is because he's talented. Uh, he's he got went to Duke. He's a smart smart guy. guy. He's smart. He's talented. He's fast. I mean, Malik fast. Na- Malik Neighbors was saying, like, you know, Kurt asked him, Kurt asked him in a meeting because they both sat next to each other. Malik and Daniel Jones. Yes, okay. it was, it's very rare to have that happen. I don't know why it happened, mm-hmm. but it did. They both walked in the room at the same time. We could talk about this on the on the on the flagship show a little bit more later on when we're done recording this on a Tuesday. But um, Kurt asked each one of them to talk about you know, a great talent of the other. Okay. And Malik neighbors said of Daniel Jones, I had no idea he was that fast. He is pretty damn fast. He's a, he's very athletic. He's tall, athletic and smart. He has everything you want and need in a quarterback, except consistent execution. Yeah. Uh, there were guys all over the field open number open. of times in a commercial break. Kurt would be on the, uh, you know, on the talk back button to the crew in the truck saying, cut that highlight for later on because they were compiling which something that they a montage for later on in the game miscues of, of daniel jones mm. wide open guys there was a flea flicker as you know yeah that worked work to perfection both guys were wide open down the middle and jones took a sack and i could see on on the other sideline as i'm calling it brian dayball going absolute <laughs> ape shit. Mm. I'll just say. Hey, whoa. Okay, I just said it. Cuz we'll just keep it here. Yeah. He went off and yeah. and as you know, he's trying to have a better comportment on the sideline uh-huh. this year and I think he's done a great job of it. His inner monologue it must, must be, be shrieking, dude. Shrieking. Like and the then out movie. and then in the, in his press conference back in the states, he, he was non-committal for Jones. And well, they did the dreaded event. We're evaluating everything, no, I, which I means, that. which means it's over, but just, you know, for giants fans, I, I don't think they, they really like Dable and the guys are open. It's not a scheme issue. It's not. And pull the trigger. And I, I, I would not be surprised. I still think this is an overreaction 
that he started his last game as a Giant. They have a bye, what, they have what are we going to do? They have a this week, and then... But this is his last year as a Giant. I mean, it's $22 million on the cap oh, yeah. to see cut you, him. See you later. And that sounds like a large amount of money, but it saves them 19 Right. You know? Done. The amount of money that they're going to be paying on the cap pays for about a year and a half of Saquon Barkley. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know why you had to bring that up. You know what? Giants fans were already, you know. Although Tyrone Tracy Jr. looks really good. He does. He's he's young, and he he had that unfortunate fumble in overtime. Yeah, that was a bummer. I felt bad for the kid. He was crying on the sideline. I know. That was terrible. That was heartbreaking. But he's good. They got talented guys there. That's for sure. They do. What else? They got got a quarterback issue, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Rich, uh, uh, news out of Chicago Tuesday morning. Shane Waldron is out as offensive coordinator. Not a surprise. They're going to have a new uh, person calling the plays uh, for Caleb Williams. The Bears made a mistake keeping Matt Eberflus heading into this year. Oh. It has gone all wrong, basically since the Hail Mary in Washington. Uh, But you could see it from the beginning. The offense just has not been right for the kid. They're not doing the kid any favors. I don't know who was the one to say, "Let's, let's hire Shane Waldron. When you had Cliff Kingsbury in the house, they had him there. Remember, remember he was yeah, there. Yeah. And we were all and like, Whoa, I'm, I'm like great inspired hire. And then, then he left. They didn't hire him and he winds up in Washington. And now we're seeing what's up, you know, in the same way that Mahomes looked as great as he looked right away. And it made Trubisky's performance that much more glaring yeah, of an issue. Absolutely. Right? Remember, if we remember uh-huh. that. And remember, Trubisky made the playoffs mm-hmm. and and the double doing, you know, yep. knocked him out. But, and I know this is old news, but every time Mahomes does what he does, makes it a glaring omission for, for the Bears to have passed on. Passed on. Right. Yeah. After trading up. All that said, all that said, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that, sure, the struggle bus is real for the Bears offensively. And, yeah. They, and, right. Yeah, okay. they got embarrassed on okay. Sunday. I'm not saying they chose the wrong quarterback. I'm not either. I'm not. I'm saying they, this, the fact that the guy that they had in the building who was actually on the sideline in the senior year of Caleb Williams in the building, they don't hire him. Now, there may be something between Williams and Cliff Kingsbury, too, right? Maybe. Maybe. We don't know. We, we have no idea. We've never heard anything Where come it out. became unhirable. Right. Where he's like, I don't want to coach the kid anymore. Maybe. Or the kid's like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Cliff, I, uh, so we don't know that. Right. We do not know that. And we don't know, um, other than the fact that the Bears probably don't like just paying somebody to not work for him. And maybe one of those organizations. Maybe. Eberflus was coaching the hell out of that defensive unit. And if you're sitting there going, hmm, what do we do here? Do we just blow it out, start fresh, get rid of him, get a new defensive coordinator in here, start fresh on every single part of it? Or do we just keep this guy, get somebody for the kid offensively, and move on? And at 4-2, and two, when they left London – Hey, it was looked best, pretty damn good. Best game offensively. Looked pretty good. Looked really good. The Hail Mary, I've never seen a team reel from a Hail Mary loss for three weeks quite like what we're seeing right now with the Bears. And they can't block anyone. I mean, nine sacks right. against a New England team. But a lot team of that, that is also been... Caleb, too. Yeah, he holds on so, to it way too so long. So I totally understand that the Bears will change horses midstream right here. And mm. But that is that is also the sign of a, of a of a coach who knows that this is a last move here. And it's got to work. Yeah, it's got to work. And it's got to work. So I can't sit here and say they made a mistake keeping this guy just yet. Just yet. Right now at four and five, it's I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call this an overreaction, but I totally understand why you're saying it. I'm also why well, you're saying we it. We were th- we were talking about this on Monday when you were gone with Kirk Morrison. Looking at the Bears' schedule and how they've looked the last three weeks during this losing streak, the line, they're giving up so many sacks. Correct. Where is another win coming from from this year? Oh, dude, it's a problem. Their entire division schedule is coming up. 
and, and they play and, San Francisco. And, and they play at San Francisco. And they play Seattle. Correct. Now, now it's similar to what we said about the Steelers, right. where we knew from week 11 on their entire division mm-hmm. schedule's coming up, and they better make some hay before it. 100%. And the Steelers won the three with Russ before entering this stretch, and the Bears have lost the three going into this stretch, which is very problematic, I would say. Not telling you tales <laughs> out of school. I, not, I, will not just, I will just say that if this move doesn't work and Caleb doesn't improve, the offense doesn't improve, right, then the Bears will, without a doubt, just wait till the Lions season is over and throw the entire mint mm-hmm. at Ben Johnson and tell him, stay in the division, come to Chicago and see what's up. Because he will, I, I'm sure it. Jacksonville will do the same thing. Yep. Probably uh, Dallas too. Uh, the Jets will do the same thing yeah. too. Yep, yep, yep. The Jets will beg him, beg him and say, we're going to get a new young quarterback and we need you. We need you. Um, so, but that's for down the road. Personally, I think, you know, Woody's going to go hire somebody else who wants to, who, who he can hook up with Rogers. Cause I think he believes in Aaron still. Hmm. What else, Chris? No more Jets talk, Rich. I know. Sorry. Last one. And this is going to be tough, but I got to say it. Based on what I saw on Sunday night, we're talking about this guy for MVP, and then now I'm worried. Jared Goff is the biggest liability to a possible Lions Super Bowl win. That is 100% the biggest overreaction of this entire podcast yet today. You're not worried watching Sunday Night Football. At all. Uh, he's skipping throws. It just... He has five picks. Sometimes happens. Bro. Dude. Dude. I'm duding you, and you're duding me. I'm duding you back. We can have a dude off right I, here. I, 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 nope. I, I no, thank you. Dude, I am really... Hard I'm pass. worried, man. Hard pass. I'm worried. Not at all. Hard pass. I'm worried. Look, Hard you do that. You do, you do that against... You do it against the Texans, you can come back and win that because Fine. Houston is not ready for so prime well time. Timed. If you do that against Kansas City, you're getting smoked. You do that against Buffalo, oh, Baltimore, you're you are not, getting you're not wrong. absolutely boat raced. So I'm glad, it's, I'm glad it's out of the system. No, that just shows me that it's there and it's lurking. No. Remember the Super Bowl against the Patriots? So what, these 14 for 14, 18 for 18, 11 for 11 starts? Ah. All, 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 all these great games that he has? Th- those those are the outlier? And this is the God. this is the real guy? This is the real guy. The other stuff is not. If the Lions don't win the Super Bowl, it's because of him. Well, I mean, that's know, what I'm it, saying. It frequently is about the quarterback if they don't win. But but I'm saying I, I, just, I Chris, just don't know if I trust him in a big Chris, game. If we're if, if we're assigning the dreaded finger of blame, oh, I love finger of blame. Last year's NFC Championship game loss. Where do you put it? I put it on the coach. That's right, and his decisions. And the and 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 the and the kind of crazy type of decisions that were made before half, yeah, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter, you put it on those type of moments. But of course, it's always who's executing and who's not afterwards. Right. I am not I, worried I, I about got, the coach this say, year. Sunday night, I made, I Sunday wor- night made me really worried about I've ri- my. I've already written it off. My Mulligan Super Bowl pick. I've already written it off. Ugh. I wrote it off the minute the the minute the minute that game was over. I wrote it off. As the Lions should, and no doubt will, Jared Goff, I am not worried about him. These things happen. They happen. Now, they don't happen. They don't. They actually don't. No no, no one throws for five picks in a game and then win the Super Bowl. Well, uh, we we may just see it this year. We may just see it this year. The biggest liability. Are we crossing him off MVP now? You can't have a game like that and win MVP. Um, I, I, I will downgrade him there. Okay. Yeah. When you're talking about it, you know, I, I'm, the re- I'm, really, li- I'm really worried, man. You want to know what the that biggest, li- you know what the biggest liability is he injured the, the way he was short arming throws and skipping them. I made me okay. think maybe he's got a little wing issue. You know, the biggest liability to the Lions winning a Super Bowl this year is what happens um, to that pass rush. We'll see what happens with the big Z when he gets in there. Yeah. You know, as you know, playoff sports always highlights the Achilles weaknesses. Fact. Always. That's a fact. Always, always. And if the if the if the Lions are gonna miss a pass rush of significance because Hutch isn't there, 
that may be what comes home to roost if they got to try and chase around Josh Allen, Lamar, chase around it's 15, 15 man. in yeah. Kansas City. That's the biggest liability right there. But this, this is that's your biggest overreaction of this entire pod. I, mean, I, hope, we I hope we doubt. don't have to play this back later. Hey, before we get to our uh, future overreactions, I want to talk to you about Omaha Steaks Ooh. a little bit here. When the box comes to the house, it's a celebration oh, oh, oh. for all of us. Oh, it's like we love Omaha Steaks. We just love the consistently awesome steak experience that is delivered. The mouth-watering desserts on top of it. The kids dig it. We dig it. We love grilling with them. And this uh, cyber sale that's going on right now, you can skip that holiday b- hustle and bustle and save 50% off site-wide during the cyber sale at OmahaStakesRight.com right now. Plus, get a $30 reward card when you shop early and score an extra $30 off with promo code Eisen. Again, from legendary steaks to mouthwatering desserts and more, save 50% off site-wide during the cyber sale at OmahaStakes.com. Plus, our listeners get an extra $30 off with promo code Eisen. And a $30 reward card when you shop early. That's 50% off at OMAHASteaks.com and an extra $30 off with promo code Eisen. Minimum purchase may apply. Visit OmahaSteaks.com for details. All right, Chris, your future overreaction last week was uh, it's it's over for Mike McCarthy. Oh, yeah. Now, well, I, I know how, oh. excuse me. Had you really had the foresight, the three-eyed ravenness, <laughs> yeah. you would have said it's curtains for Mike <laughs> right, McCarthy. right. right. <laughs> If you had only uh, seen that whole if I business, seen that light. If, if you will, I know everyone else did. I know, uh, and mine was C.J. Stroud isn't all that. <sighs> did you or did you not just trade him away in fantasy? I sure did. <laughs> so I might be overreacting. <laughs> I might be overreacting because my, my ship was sinking uh, because of his uh, lack of fantasy. Tank you know, was so open. Why did he wait so long to throw it? Uh, it? Just he's not seeing it. Man. He's not seeing it right now. They're really missing Stefan Diggs. Uh, and Nico Collins. So, Dude. All right. I got, so I, did, I, uh, did I fall prey to my own overreaction? It's, it's possible. You okay. may have jumped the gun. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. Here's what I got. Uh, it's, it's, Jim Harbaugh is, we love Jim Harbaugh. Right, God, God bless him. He, he's turned this, uh, turned this thing around here for the Chargers. Uh-huh. They're not charging anymore, but eh, who have they really beaten? Oh, The boy. Chargers are Fugazi playoff contenders. Get out of here. If you want to just throw up uh, their schedule real quick, we can talk about the quarterbacks that they've actually beaten this year. Um Gardner Minshew, Bryce Young, uh, rookie Justin Bo Fields. Nix, uh, <laughs> they lost to Justin Fields. Uh, Spencer Rattler and Jameis Winston and Will Levis. Not exactly uh, blowing my socks well, off. Well, here comes, uh, dude, uh, here comes Joe, that, Joseph Burrow. That's what I'm talking about. And, and, and Jay Chase. And it might be welcome uh, welcome to the big leagues here when uh, Burrow and Chase are kind of running wild on him at SoFi. Um, I'm a little worried about the Chargers here because now they have Lamar Jackson and Kirk Cousins and ba- and and Patrick Mahomes and Baker Mayfield and Drake May. So you know, I'm, a little, Drake May, I'm a little worried about about the Chargers. Um, I I I, I hear you. Okay, we'll see if that's uh, we'll see, we'll if see. that's if we'll that's born again. Out. We might be overreacting to that. I'm just saying. Uh, okay, all right. Um, and then on the other side, the game of the week coming up is Kansas City at Buffalo. Mm, big time. And here we go. Here we go. Get ready. What do you got? Get ready. The Uh-oh. cheese is going to be nah. even. The cheese will stand alone. <laughs> mm. The cheese will stand alone. I'm not referring to the Packers. I'm talking about that cheese that the that the at the Chiefs are vulnerable. Oh, and it's going to be in, it's going to be in full. Oh, throat. baby, it's going to be in full. So you're going to pick Buffalo. I, I'm not, I might not pick Buffalo. But it's going to be a, such yeah. a sequence uh-huh. where it's going to be a no. Oh, they they had a they there had a is. block of field goal. They had to get this thing. They had to get they're they're the luckiest team out there. They are the luckiest team okay. out there. I mean, come you on. know the refs are always you know caping for Mahomes. Mahomes is asking the ref to tell him before he's okay. getting hit. Exactly. All right, that's the future overreaction. <laughs> I like it. Certainly, if the Bills win it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they're vulnerable for sure. You know. For sure. Although it's tough, you want to play that. You want to play the. Uh, I don't see uh, another loss game. Take for, a look at the Chiefs' Kansas schedule after Buffalo? this. After this week, for Kansas City. Oh, so if they, you're saying if they beat Buffalo, they might be. Well, no, or if gonna... Buffalo beats them, the Kansas City's still going to be. Um, yeah. 
still going to be tough to well, catch. They, they might be resting the, the guys in week week 18. Who knows? Think, At any rate, that's it for Overreaction like Monday. Like uh, be sure to check out uh, also later on on Tuesday, What the Football, Susie Schuster and Amy Trask with the one and only Dan Patrick. Oh. We'll be joining them. Fuego. Talk about that. Uh, the uh, No Contest Wrestling Podcast with O'Shea Jackson Jr. and TJ Jefferson. Keep an eye out or an ear out for that on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, the Jim Jackson Show. All of them can be checked out on the Rich Eisen Show YouTube channel. And by the way, another way for you to find us is the Rich Eisen Show relationship with Yahoo! Exclamation Sports Ooh. is officially underway. So check us out. Uh, on the Yahoo Sports platform as well. There's our YouTube channel. We're unavoidable is basically (laughs) what we're saying. For Chris, I'm Rich. That's Overreaction Monday. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.